So the summer holidays have started. That's six whole weeks of catching tiddlers in the stream and watching Minecraft. Or is it a chance to keep studying and to get ahead of the academic year come September? Um, to help me kind of work out the answer to this, I'm joined by Lorraine Yarderberg, who is from the JK Educate Institute, which is a consultancy company for tutors and tuition. Professor Sue Hallam from the uh, UCL Institute of Education. She's a professor in education. And also Pendle Hart, who's an author at Absolutely Mama. So I suppose what we need to do is to work out, first of all, what tutoring is or what kind of work can be done over the summer holidays. So I'm actually going to turn to Lorraine Yarderberg first on that. Could you just tell me a bit about the company and what age group, what, how old are the children that come to you, and also how long are these courses and tutor sessions? Certainly. Um, well, the company is a, a company that provides educational consultancy, so advice to parents and to families. And then we also provide tutoring. So all of our tutors are trained by us. They're graduates to a very high standard, or they're teachers from school. And then we place the tutors and match them with our students according to what they need. So then we look at children from the age of 5 to 18, and every child is different and has an individual need. So the way we start is by looking at what is the child's individual need, and then we build the tutoring around that. So it's very bespoke and very much for each individual child. So sp specific to the summer holidays, do you offer you know, an hour session, a day session? Do you do kind of camps almost? Um, so in the summer holidays, we look at various types of individual tutoring first. So we'd look at children who need catch up, who may have been ill over the school year, who've got confidence issues. There may be children who are sitting the 11 plus and are going straight back into the exams in September. And also students who are doing GCSEs and A-levels who really want to improve their performance. In all of those circumstances, we would recommend summer tutoring and we would put programs together for those children. In, it might be one hour a week, it might be three hours a week. It really depends on the circumstances and the child. And Sue, so, in your experience, I mean, you've spent years studying, does, does study work? Uh, does, does a child get to a point when they're just exhausted or do you think children should carry on studying? It varies enormously with the particular child. Um, I think that parents in making decisions about things like whether they have tutoring need to consider the stress the child might be under, what exactly it's for, what its purposes are for, whether the child wants to do it. Um, and if the child seems to be very stressed, and it's usually fairly obvious when they are, it may be better not to do it and allow them to do other things that they really enjoy doing. Um, but it depends on having people to advise you about your individual child who are responsible um, in the way they look at that child and what their needs are. You just touched then on signs of anxiety. You said they were obvious. Could, do you mind just kind of <laughs> listing a few yeah. kind of signs? I think not sleeping not eating. Um, at the extreme cases, it can be self-harm. Um, it can be just not wanting to go to school within you know, school times, just getting upset about the slightest thing. It's usually, if you're sensitive to your child, you will notice when there are things wrong. Okay. Now, Pendle, you're a mother of two. Yes. So what are your feelings on the summer holidays and, and your plans for your children? I think they should be free to have a bit of fun. They're, they have a very busy life. They're rushing from one thing to another in term time. They're busy with homework. They should have a bit of time to just be free and left to their own devices and come up with their own entertainment. Okay. We, we posted this story actually last week um, and we had so many comments. Um, and one of them was from a woman called Elaine and she was saying that, you know, the summer holidays is an ideal opportunity for children to develop their social and life skills. Um, so can I ask, put that question to you? Um, you know, how, how important is it to get away from the academic side of life for a bit? It's very important. I mean, it's like everybody else at work. You know, you need a break from it sometimes. And if you feel your child needs some extra stimulation, there are ways to do that, which can be interesting without actually going into formal homework or tutoring. Um, I mean, there are all sorts of interesting places you can visit. Um, you can encourage... Uh, reading for leisure, you know, the, uh, I mean, a lot of things which will really um, encourage your child to engage. Uh, board games, they might be a bit old fashioned now, yeah. but they're very good for counting and all that kind of thing. So there's lots of activities you can do which have an educational outcome, which actually are not formal education and which really can be fun. 
And I just want to explain, actually, because I look really rude. I know, I'm sitting here looking at my phone. It's a Facebook Live, so all your questions and all your comments that you're posting at the moment are coming into me here. That's why I'm looking down. Um, and I've got one from Hayley, which, um, Lorraine, I'll put to you, actually. She says, I totally agree that children need to learn according to their individual need. But how? How is this achieved? She's saying that understanding a child takes a long time and good communication. You meet children for a short period of time, don't you? Yes, we, we assess children so we understand their needs immediately. Over a three-hour period, we can actually learn a huge amount about a child, what their potential looks like and what their achievement looks like, and then we'll take um, information from the parents in order to make decisions together about what sort of tutoring might be necessary or not necessary. We do turn children away as well and just give advice, no, don't tutor over the summer, do go off and read books and all the things that Sue's just been talking about, but in some cases it is actually quite important for the children to have that bit of extra support over the summer. Yeah, I mean, Pendle, that's a really good point, isn't it? It's taking time to talk to your child and listen to your child rather than listening to what's being yes. talked about in the playground. And as parents, it's remembering, isn't it, to trust your instinct. If you, with two young girls, have you been aware of a kind of a, a stress on the parents to be stressed about your children? Yeah, well, we're very busy. And um, everyone's, my year six daughter's just finished her SATs. They've all been under an enormous amount of pressure. All the parents have been discussing what schools they're going to go to. I think it's very good to just have a complete break from all of that and for the kids to be under no pressure at all, all summer. I mean, I don't think it's putting them under pressure to take them to interesting places, to yeah. take them on holiday, to give them things to read, to um, try and encourage them to improve their behavior generally. I don't mean they should be completely feral, though maybe a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got two quite feral kids at home. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Lindsay, she's a teacher, <clears throat> and I'll put this to you soon. She says they shouldn't be tutored, but a refresher with parents through the use of games would be good because it's all a part of school and parent partnership. And actually, I'll ask you first, Sue, about that, about, um, you know, should teachers at the end of the academic year give kind of practice things? You know, you need to practice mm -hmm. your times tables. Um, and then I'll come to you, actually, Lorraine, about the relationship between a tutor and a teacher, if that's okay. So, Sue, yeah. yeah. Well, I, th I think we go back to the individual child. <clears throat> I think it'd be quite difficult to get a teenager to play board games. So, you know, you're talking <laughs> about different ages of, of children here. Um, in, in relation to more formal learning and homework and things like that, I think that the best thing that parents can do is talk to the teachers at school. So if a teacher is saying to, to the parent, you know, your child really is not mastering this particular thing, um, and there are various activities which are fun that you can do in order to support that, then that's great. But, you know, if the teachers are happy, then probably the parents should be happy too because the teachers have been working with the children, you know, throughout the year and usually know where, where there may be issues. With older children, if you're not careful, if you try and pressure them into doing things they don't want to do, they will want to establish their independence and you may end up making it more difficult for them and you to kind of resolve the issues going forward. Okay. And Ray, do you encourage parents to talk to the teachers first? Absolutely. First port of call, go into school. We always say to parents when they come to us for advice, we always say go into school, have a meeting with the teacher. If they don't know what to say, we'll help them ask the questions. And then when they've had that conversation, if they're not happy, then they can come back to us and have further discussions. But we work alongside schools always. I'm a previous deputy head teacher. I was training to be a head. You know, I, my heart is in schools. So we're always there supporting the school first. And what I want to ask of our audience, actually, is tutoring is very, very expensive. So what ways can we carry on educating our children without having to pay as well? So do you get an older brother or sister to sit and do homework? Because that change can make a difference to them. So if you want to comment, please do under the page, and we'll put those comments together later. But I think that's also really important to remember. You know, tutoring isn't available to everybody um, for that very reason, but there are definitely other ways. Um, actually, Pendle, I was just thinking, of, we've had a question in um, about somebody saying, what's wrong with being bored? You've got two very yes. different children, so what are their boredom thresholds and how do you <laughs> deal with that? Well, um, um, my elder daughter can sort of entertain herself now. My little daughter is desperate for something to do all the time. She, she needs to bake cupcakes. She needs to, someone to play a game with her. She'll stand under your feet. 
Uh, but I think it calms down as time goes on because they're very used to having being given something to do, being told, right, you're, you're now going to gymnastics, then you're going to dance, then you're coming home to do your homework, and after that you're having a bath. Um, and to give them a bit of time to work out their own activities is beneficial, I think. But yeah. it's only day two of the holidays, so <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> yeah, we're only in the first week, aren't we? Um, yeah, Sue, do you encourage boredom? The reason I ask is I've got a, I've got a friend... Um, who insists from time to time on putting the two children in the back of the car, no iPads, no mobiles, no screens, nothing, and she shouts at them that being bored is really good for yeah. you. I mean, do you think that we've kind of lost that in quite a yeah. frantic way of parenting at the moment? Yeah. I mean, the, the <coughs> the, there are people who suggest that actually being bored leads to creativity and people, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about what they want to do and coming up with their own games and entertainments. You know, if you if you were of my generation, we didn't have all those things. And, uh, you know, typically you would play with your friends and you would, yeah, lots of make-believe kinds of things. Mm. And I think that's perhaps something, you know, missing uh, in a lot of children's lives mm. now that they feel they've got to have all these real things and they can't, you know, use two cardboard boxes when they're small to pretend they're in a boat or a car, which is mm. the kind of thing that we had to do because there weren't so many toys. So I think being bored and then having to create your own mm. ideas for activities is actually quite a positive thing. And for teenagers, you know, they, they spend a lot of time listening to music um, and, and being bored in a way for them is, is I think, to some extent, um, opportunities for them to think about things mm -hmm. and get things in perspective and, and that kind of thing. And Sarah says it's important to use it or lose it, so she suggests that you practice an hour every day. I mean, is, that's presumably where the tutoring helps because it's quite structured and it's away from the parents? Well, I think we need to be careful in lumping tutoring in one piece. Um, tutoring is about having a person who's going to work with a child, either individually or together, for different reasons. And so just talking about creativity, we, we might be tutoring to enable a child to promote their curiosity, for example. Some children might find that difficult. There are lots of reasons why you tutor. So I, I would say Yes, use it before you lose it, but you might be using it doing something else as well, like a creative activity. And, but a lot of children don't have the confidence to do it. So one of the things we like to do is we write blogs. Um, we do a lot of free um, PR to help families to understand what they can do for their children on their own. If we're looking at tutoring specifically, then it's got to be with a purpose. It's got to be measurable, and it's got to have a time frame attached to it with a review. So it's not something you do just endlessly as part of life. It's got to be a really thought about thing to do. And Pencil, last question goes to you, really. As a parent, how do you manage all of this? On top of everything else, how do you make sure they're ticking over and that they're engaged and going to museums as well? And do you have like a, what's your advice? Basically, do you sit down with them and go, what do you want to do this summer holiday? Um, yes, I suppose so. But then I'm not going to necessarily do everything they want to do. Um, we just muddle through, really. We do a combination of, I'm, I'm working, so we do a combination of activities and childcare and free time, and we're going away. I don't really, I don't have the solution. Okay, listen, it's been really good fun. I know the debate's gonna keep going, so please do keep posting your comments and we'll take a look at them throughout the day. Um, thank you so much to all of you. It's been really good fun, and um, yeah, let's just hope they carry on learning, but also just have fun as well.